Hey guys, what's up? My name is Mills and I make videos about living in the Dominican Republic. I live in Santiago de los Caballeros and I want to help you guys move there, live there, travel to the DR if that's what you're interested in. Um, I also make videos about other things too and I'm going to make more about kind of general things, not just related to the DR. So if you're interested, uh, feel free, please hit subscribe comment, like below, whatever you prefer would be amazing. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the visa situation in the Dominican Republic, how I live there, um, how you can live there, work there, travel, just um, some of the brief outlines because I know visas can, and passports and work permits and everything can get really complicated and boring, but unfortunately they're important because I don't want anyone to get arrested or deported, basically. So, as a lot of you know, I moved to the Dominican Republic July 2017 to teach at a private school. Um, it's a private Christian school in Jarabacoa. I taught fourth grade and I did not have any type of visa to do that. So I found the school on my own. I knew that I wanted to live in Jarabacoa, so it was pretty easy for me, honestly, because in one town, there's not that many options of jobs for foreigners that they'll hire and jobs that I am a fit for, if that makes sense. So there were only a few schools that I was looking at and a couple other things, but I did not need any type of special visa. So first I'm gonna talk a little bit about trips. So if you just wanna travel to the DR and uh, take a vacation here, or maybe an extended vacation, you totally can and it's not like that hard. You don't need, if you're an American or a Canadian or a European, you don't need any special visa to come to the DR. You do need a 30 day tourist visa card. Now in the past, when I used to come on like mission trips and vacations, we needed to wait in a separate line once we got off the airplane in the Dominican Republic and pay $10 in cash, pesos or American dollars um, to get a physical tourist card. And that basically just says that you can stay in the country for 30 days, right? Um, it's pretty easy. You don't have to do anything online first. You just do it in the DR once you get there, which is amazing. But now they changed it a little bit to make it even easier for us. So typically in nearly every airline, that tourist card is included in the airline price now. So you don't need to go in a separate line before customs. When you get to the airport in San Domingo, Punta Cana, Santiago, you just go through customs just like everyone else, right? Um, the car, so you don't need to have $10 cash, pesos, dollars, it's really easy. Um, you don't get a physical card or anything showing that I paid for this 30 day card or anything like that. Really, they'll just look at the stamp in your passport. So that means you can stay in the country for 30 days, you can have your vacation or an extended vacation. Now you can also extend it by an additional 30 days. Usually you have to like go to the um, office in Santo Domingo to do that and let's get serious. Like most people don't want to do that, right? But with the tourist card, you can also drive with your American license, your Canadian license, your country's license, and that only lasts for 90 days. So I know that I said um, the tourist card is 30 days. So here's where, where it gets a little bit confusing. You can overstay that visa. And I know typically you can't in whatever country you go to, usually you can't overstay. I know a lot of people who teach English in other countries and they need to do like border runs, right? So every like three months, they need to run, like go to the border and kind of like reset their visa and re-enter the country again. So they're not like breaking any laws. The DR has a system where you can pay a fee to overstay that 30 days, right? So um, I don't have residency and I'm not a citizen. I'm just a tourist in the DR. I live there on my tourist card. Now, when I overstay, because I often overstay the 30 days, right? Because I'm not always going to the States once a month. You pay a fee at the airport in either dollars, pesos, or credit card. I usually use card because I don't have that much cash on me. If you stay one day over to three months over, so this say like day 31, this is where it starts, right? So say you get there October 1st, November 2nd is when this fee would kick in. So say you go to the airport and you, it's now December 5th. So you overstayed a month and a few days, 
you have to pay 2,500 pesos at the airport um, for your overstay fee. I don't know why I keep like doing quotes. It is the overstay fee. That is about 50 US dollars, okay? Now, if you overstay three to nine months over that initial 30 day period, then you're paying 4,000 pesos or $80 at the airport. Then there's a fee for nine to 12, 12 to 18. It goes all the way up to 10 years. So in theory, you could overstay for 10 years on your tourist card and then just pay a fee at the airport. So a lot of people do that because it's way easier than going through the residency process. There are benefits, of course, to being a resident, but if you're not planning to work or buy anything, like a property or something, honestly, it makes sense possibly to just stay on the tourist. So 10 years, if you overstay that, you pay 70,000 pesos or that's like over $1,000, $1,400. Someone who's better at math, do it. Don't judge me. <laughs> so obviously I don't know a lot of people who overstay 10 months. I've stayed, I think the longest I overstayed was six months and then I paid $4,000 at the airport. I've never paid more than 4,000 4, pesos at the airport, thank goodness. Um, I've never paid more than 4,000 pesos or $80 at the airport. Now, since we just said that you can overstay um, your 30 day tourist card trip thing, uh, you can drive with your American, Canadian, European license for 90 days. Um, I, I still drive with my American license. Um, I, yeah, I've said this before, like do as I say, not as I do. Um, I've never been pulled over by the police. I've never gotten a ticket. I've never gotten stopped by Ahmet or the national police or local police or anything. So I guess I've been lucky driving. I don't drive a lot anymore. I do have a car, I'm trying to sell it. If anyone wants a car, it's a 1998 Honda Passport comment below <laughs> shameless plug but yeah i've gotten lucky um i you do have to pay fees if you get pulled over and you're over the 90 days and um you're driving with not a dominican license uh sometimes you can like bribe and and get out of it but luckily i've never had to do anything like that after the 90 days you are technically supposed to get a dominican license and to do that you need to get residency residency is kind of a long process and it's a little bit complicated because as I say, if you know the DR, it's everything's slower. Everything's just like one more paper that you need. So um, it requires some patience. You need to pay between like one to $2,000 for your residency, which is not anything like insanely expensive. But if you're living in the DR and you're not making uh, dollars or a, a substantial income, then yeah, that's a big upfront fee. Also, if you use a lawyer, of course, that fee is gonna go up way more. So in addition to that, you need to provide a bunch of documents, uh, your birth certificates, your medical records, a whole bunch of things. And you need to go back to your home country to the consulate in your home country. So for example, um, if I wanted to do residency to get everything started, I would need to fly back to the United States and go to the Dominican consulate in the US. You can also fast track residency. Um, if you make a certain amount of income or pension every month, you can get a faster residency as well as if you make an investment in the DR. I think it has to be at least $200,000. So if you buy a property or something, then that could fast track your residency process, which is nice because as we said, everything's a little bit slower in the DR. It might be a long process. The benefit of residency is then you get a cedula, which is a, it's kind of like a license, like a, a government card, identification card, you have a number. Now, um, back to the job thing, you won't get hired if you don't have a cedula. So uh, there's obviously, if you wanna work locally in the DR, um, you really won't get hired if you don't have residency. Now, of course, there's always exceptions, but that's the general rule and it's pretty enforced in like the majority of businesses. But, you know, there's a lot of like programs and exchanges and things where you can kind of get by. For example, I did not have residency to work at the private school. Um, I don't know, really. They took care of it. Not really sure if it was 
the proper way to do anything, but um, I got paid into a Dominican bank account um, once a month. And I, yeah, I didn't have any different visa. I just had the tourist visa and I paid the fee at the airport for like Christmas and after I left at the end of the year. I know that uh, missionaries, which there are a ton of missionaries in the Dominican Republic, whether they work at a school or they work at an orphanage or their own kind of organization, there is a special visa for missionaries. Um, I think that you have to pay up front, but it allows you to overstay that um, that 30 day period and you don't pay a fee at the airport. Um, so that's nice and you're kind of there legally and everything with that visa. Whew, it is hot, hot, hot here. What else? Dominican companies are also required to hire 70% Dominicans. So even if you have a cedula, sometimes they can't over, they can't go over that number of foreigners that they have employed in the company, which I like because um, of course, I think that Dominicans should probably get the jobs, um, especially local jobs before an expat, for example. Um, yeah, I think it helps like foster their own economic growth um, a little bit more. So that is the main gist of a lot of people ask me how I stay. I stay on the tourist card and I overstay and I pay the fee at the airport. But this year I've only overstayed once because I have taken numerous trips to the States, like three, three times or four times this year already. So I don't often need to pay that fee. And if I do, it's um, just the over 30 days. So it's um, just $50, which is still annoying because I'm Takanya. But um, obviously it's a much easier process than going through residency and you need to be a resident for, I believe six years. And I think there's a, an annual fee um, before you can apply for citizenship. So it's kind of a workaround. And I do realize that there are, are advantages to getting your residency and um, I feel kind of bad about it. But um, since I'm not saying like long-term probably, unless I move back, then it doesn't make sense for me to get the residency right now. Um, but in the future, I would love to, since I'm marrying a Dominican, I think it's a little bit easier for me to get my residency. And another note, a lot of people think like, if your child is born in the DR, they're automatically Dominican citizens, but we don't have the same rule here as we do in the United States. I forget what it's called, um, but they're not automatically Dominican citizens. You have to prove that one of the parents is Dominican. I will say like almost everyone I know that's living in the DR, that's a uh, European, Canadian, um, American, are just overstaying uh, because most people don't work locally in the DR. And if they are, it's kind of like an organization, a volunteer situation, a missionary situation um, where they're fundraising monthly support. That's generally what I'm seeing even for people working at language centers. So I will say some of the jobs that will hire you without residency um, would be some schools, um, language centers or institutions um, where you're teaching French, teaching English, something like that. They will with hire you without your residency. Maybe things like in the tourism industry, but I haven't checked um, obviously like in a lot of jobs because I knew I was coming to teach and I now work 100% remotely for US clients from the DR. But I will say working remotely in the DR is probably the best way to do it if you need an income. Like if you have a pension or social security or a trust fund, that'd be nice. Uh, you obviously don't need to worry about jobs and then you can just come and go as you please on the tourist card, maybe overstay, maybe get your residency if you think that you wanna stay in the DR long term. Overall, I do everything here um, with my American driver's license, with my passport, um, mostly my passport, and I have not been ever asked for my residency or which I don't have or my tourist card, which I don't give out at the airport anymore. So I know that they're cracking down on this. Um, I had one friend get stopped at the airport on Christmas break and they tried to send her back to the States because she didn't have like the proper visa. But I think because she was working at a school in the capital, 
and they maybe saw that or like had an issue with that because she didn't have a, a residency or a, the proper visa. Um, but they ended up letting her stay. She just needed to like provide all the forms to them ASAP. And I think they like kept her luggage. Um, I have heard of them like of officials and police officers questioning more people, more in the tourist areas. Uh, that has not happened to me or anyone that I know, any of the other expats that I know. Uh, but that is just like something to be aware of. I think that they are cracking down more and it's taking a little bit, obviously, DR like to get that. But I do think that they are trying to implement like more regulations with the overstaying of the tourist card. I will let you know if I see any like big like changes to that or um, any new rules or regulations. If you have any questions, please comment below. I kind of did this like off my head. So if you, if I miss something that you are interested in, just comment below and I will try to either uh, find the answer for you or I might know the answer. Uh, if you have any questions about anything else, please let me know. Uh, I wanna do a live soon. So just like any questions you have for me, we can like hang out and talk. Um, you can write those below or message me on Instagram, which I link below as well. And I have the video coming of the child workers that I did and another video about my car accident the first week I moved to the DR. So as I'm talking about, never had any problems. <laughs> also, shameless plug to my wedding makeup trial. Let me know if you like it below. Uh, this was trial two. Trial one was yesterday and I think I like this one more. So you guys are like, oh, she actually did her makeup today. Not me, cannot take credit for that. <laughs> All right, I hope you guys have an awesome day and I will see you guys soon.